This is the West Michigan Sports Show, presented by Daysos Digital. Now, here's your host, Brandon Worth. Hello, everybody. Welcome into the West Michigan Sports Show, presented by Dezos Digital. It's yours truly, Brandon Worth, joining you here. So glad to have you guys here on News Radio WBRN this Saturday, and we have a great show for you. We'll get into the local sports scoreboard, as always, break down this last week in football, soccer, volleyball, and more. And in the second half of the show, uh, an interesting conversation here. We elected to go away from the interview this week because of the prominence that was projected to come with the Detroit Tigers here at our network. So obviously this is a high school sports show, so I figured I'd find ways to equivalent what the Tigers have done to some of the ways that high school sports can have a rebound and have a great ending of their season despite a really sluggish start. So we'll get into some of those ways teams can build as well as some observations from that team and how they were able to turn it around. But big thanks to those that support this show, including Johnson's Automotive, the Schuberg Insurance Agency, Quality Car and Truck Repair, Alter Care of Big Rapids, Paris Auto Sales and Service of Big Rapids, Motor of the Macasta Osceola Transit Authority, and the Macasta Osceola Career Center. Thank you for your support of the West Michigan Sports Show. If you want to help support our local sports, contact us at the Big Rapids Media Network, 796-7000, and we can get your business up and running on our platforms to help you serve the community and support local high school athletics. All right, without further ado, as always on our scheduled program, let's go through the local sports scoreboard. Lakeview Volleyball Invitational this past Saturday on September 21st. Lakeview falls to Ithaca in straight sense 25-15 and 25-18, as well as they were able to compete against Blanchard Montebello and get a victory in three sets, 25-15, 25-20, and 25-10. to We also had cross-country that we'll recap upcoming uh, here. There was some cross-country last week at the Big Rapids Veterans Serving Memorial, or Veterans Invitational that was held in Cadillac. Big Rapids competed at it, I should say, um, as well as some other local teams uh, in competition there, as well as at Shepard this weekend, but we'll break that down uh, next week's show. Euler Invitational as well. We'll get results from there as Kent City was taking on the Shepherd Blue Jays, and we'll see if we can get that score for you. Uh, we'll go all the way back a little bit to September 24th uh, for some volleyball action the CSAA. It was a tough one. Big Rapids, Chip Hills, and Remus, and it's the Warriors taking down the Cardinals 14-25, 25-21, 27-25, and 25-20. A huge win for the Lady Warriors there against the Cardinals. Nuego against Reed City. It's the Lions winning at home. How about a big-time win for Nuego? They take down Reed City at home. Kent City against Lakeview. It's straight sets and a win for the Eagles. They win 25-9, 25-11, 25-10. Grant against Tri-County. This one would only need three sets in favor of the Tigers at home as they continue a really nice home record this season. And Central Malcolm falls to Molly Stanwood on their home floor as the Mohawks win it in straight sets, 25-16, 25-12, and 25-17. Volleyball from the 26th, we go Chip Hills against Reed City. Chip Hills obviously got the win against the Cardinals. They were not able to extend the win streak. Reed City beats them in a revenge game um, from their loss earlier in the week in straight sets, 3-0. Moe Stanwood and White Cloud, this was a highly anticipated matchup over there in Moe Stanwood. It would take four sets, but Stanwood gets it done at home in four against the Indians of White Cloud. Lakeview and Central Montcalm. This one was only played, I believe, to three sets. It needed extra points in the first, but Montcalm holds on and then wins the next two. They win it in straight sets, as well as Howard City Tri County against Big Rapids. It would be the Cardinals over the Vikings in four sets, getting this CSA victory as well. The Lone Boy Soccer matchup there held on the 26th, which would have been Thursday, 2 1, as the Cardinals down the Vikings of Whitehall in non conference action by a score of 2 to 1. Moving ahead to September 25th, moving ahead in our scoreboard, but moving back a day to Wednesday, it was the opening round of CSAA Boys Soccer Tournament in the quarterfinal round. Reed City falls to Big Rapids at Cardinal Stadium, 8-0. Howard City Tri-County takes down Lakeview by a score of 6-0, and Grant Beach Nuego, what a revenge game for the Tigers. They win by a score of 3 to nothing. a big-time upset there in a rivalry matchup. Uh, those games were precursored back by September 23rd on Monday. Uh, many of those teams getting in some non-conference action before uh, they would play in that CSA tournament round. Reed City fell to Midland Calvary Baptist. Kent City falls in a one-goal affair to Wyoming Kelloggsville. One-goal deficit, that is. Five goals total, 3-2. to two. Kennewa Hills against Grant. They win 8 nothing. And Belding takes down Lakeview by a score of 5 
to one. We also got football for you to recap, of course, uh, from this past Friday night. A lot of good games on tap and a lot of good results coming in across the board. First one, the most shocking one, likely of them all, according to the media. Central Montcalm upsets Berrien Springs at their homecoming. Big time win for the Hornets. They win 22 to nine. Big Rapids and Grant obviously weren't able to compete in the contest, but the result was given to Big Rapids virtue of a forfeit. So that score would go in as one nothing for those keeping track at home. Uh, but it's a win for Big Rapids on our homecoming without a football game. Very unfortunate for that situation. And I'm glad that they were able to make the Powder Puff game move back. Uh, for those that enjoyed that Friday night, heard some great feedback from that. And uh, glad they were able to really keep something going uh, to keep their a lot of the energy up. Keep an event at the end of the week because you have a lot of energy built up, a lot of hype. There's got to be something to put it all into. And it sounded like Powder Puff certainly did just that. So really, really nice job by everybody. Um, I think really when it comes down to it, they made the best of the situation. And it really did. Uh, was a memorable one. Obviously, for some reasons, more than one. Um, but great job by Big Rapids able to make it a successful weekend despite the circumstances. Tri-County against Kent City. It's the Vikings over the Eagles in a highly anticipated affair. 40-22 to at home. The Vikings bounce back after a loss in Nuevo. Speaking of Nuevo, them against Reed City, the game of the week in a lot of media's minds across the central and west Michigan area. And it certainly was an offensive affair. It was 28-21 at halftime, but Reed City takes over in the second half. What an offensive performance from Coach Shankle and company. 63-37. to Your final score in that one. Also have Lakeview against Moe Stanwood. The Wildcats take down the Mohawks 28-8 to at home. A big win for Lakeview over the Mohawks and White Cloud against Chip Hills. Coach Palong's team gets it's their first win in big time dominant fashion, 62 to 24. Your final score there. We did have one boys soccer matchup to highlight from Friday night. Hart against Tri County. Final score: Hart two, Tri County zero. So there you have it. Those are the local results from your local sports scoreboard for all of our contests here over the past seven days. I want to go back to Tuesday, though, and highlight some of our great cross-country athletes as we had some jamborees, including the CSAA Red Jamboree, which is a lot of our local schools here in our media networks. So I wanted to go back and highlight that meet. Um, it took place over at Grant, over there at their athletic facility over there by the middle school. And uh, it's a very little bit of a flat course, uh, a little bit of loopage involved, and I uh, saw some really good times across across the board um, competing for a lot of our Red Jamboree teams. And uh, we'll start on the men's side. It was an official team win for Tri-County. How about the Vikings and Coach Rackley? What a job they've done as they get the victory. 32 points for the Vikings. Reed City in second with 55. Big Rapids right behind in 58. Only three points behind as well as Chip Hills and Nuego following up a only two point difference between places four and five between those teams. August Rohde is your individual champion with a time of 16.59. Senior Hayden Gould out of Big Rapids in second. Alex Culver in third for Tryon County as well as Keelan Monroyal of Tryon County finishing fourth. A really talented freshman with a great time and Kyan Deem of Big Rapids at 1805 your top five there for big rapids over on the women's side in the red jamboree we saw a little bit of a different shakeup than we did on the men's side here same course obviously uh obviously different competitors being on the men's and women's side but really a lot of different results here overall team winner is chippewa hills with 36 points the warriors continue their running dominance in the csaa conference they score 36 points reed city in second with 57 nuego right behind in 70 with 71 points in third big rapids in fourth with 92 111 points for Tryon County in fifth, and Grant finishes sixth on their home course at 172 points. Uh, it's Laura Castrojan of Nuego with your individual win at this Jamboree, 2048, the final time there for the sophomore. Quinn Hatfield, the junior, right behind for Chip Hills at 2056. Dory Simon and Ellison Foster of Chip Hills and Nuego, respectively. A pair of freshmen come in at third and fourth. And Claire Smoots of Reed City, finishing fifth the senior with a time of 22.08, rounding out your top five individual finishers for the CSAA Jamboree. So really good start for all of our runners. They are obviously going to be gearing up uh, for the big one coming up at Reed City. I can't tell you guys how excited I am to see our runners back on my alma mater's course. Can't wait to see you guys there. And uh, it's going to be a great race and it's going to be a great season of competition upcoming. Uh, for those interested on the CSA Red Conference and that championship, it will be held on October 15th there at Reed City uh, over there by the middle school is where the course will be held. And a lot of teams debuted it last year, a lot of fast times and a lot of good feedback. So we look forward uh, to seeing 
everybody competing, and it's going to be a really fun time. We're going to take a break. We're going to pay some bills. When we come back, a discussion on the Detroit Tigers, their miraculous midseason turnaround, how they did it, and how it can apply to a local high school program. You're listening to the West Michigan Sports Show here on WBRN. The West Michigan Sports Show is brought to you by Dezos Digital. Dezos Digital specializes in a number of crucial business elements in today's advanced world of technology. Dezos Digital specializes in web design, digital content creation, including graphic design for logos, advertising, and digital videos. Bezos Digital also works with programmatic digital display advertising and YouTube digital video advertising. They also work with premium and performance audio streaming, both via the Big Rapids Media Radio Station streams as well as Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, and more. Find out more information at DezosDigital.com. Welcome back here to the West Michigan Sports Show presented by Dezos Digital. We're talking about the Tigers. Obviously, this is a West Michigan sports show geared towards high school sports, as we mentioned before the break. But I think it's worth talking about in this case. Obviously, I mentioned we had an interview that was slated up, but I'm going to save it for next week. You guys are going to enjoy it. It's a really, really good one. Um, So be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast, WBRN Live, as well as post-produced, WBRN.com and Spotify, Apple Podcast platforms. But I think the biggest thing that we can take from the Tiger success is coaches can really evaluate the way that your team can win. Because it feels like a lot of the times we see a winning method, we see a winning strategy, and we want to emulate it as much as possible, which obviously sometimes means we might take certain players over others in certain positions or places in the season and trying to maneuver them more towards the scheme. Now, it seems to be what the Tigers have done has been, first of all, incredible. Second of all, smart. And third, methodical. And it's something that when you look at it in its detail, you kind of can overlook the magnitude of what kind of strategy they've made, right? And so we're talking about that, and obviously it's going to relate a lot towards baseball, but I'm going to try my best here to emulate it and kind of re-picture and re-illustrate this in a mindset that can be applicable to all sports. So here's point number one. Point number one is is giving your players a system that benefits the players as much as the system. Now, I know that every team will run their operation of how they manage their players on the field differently. And a lot of them bring the same amount of success regardless of how diverse and different one program can be in comparison to another, right? Very simplified as opposed to complex, very fast as opposed to slower, a lot more aggressive as opposed to conservative, right? There's a lot of different ways that you can run it. But when you have the players that you have, being able to adjust your system towards the benefit and skill of your players is something that can really, really benefit you and give you a better chance to be successful in the game, in a program, in a season, so on and so forth, right? You look at the Tigers. Ever since the All-Star break, they made some changes. They started putting in some younger players, right? Obviously, some of them were put in based on choice, some of them based on injury and circumstances, right? But what they did was they started to understand that we need to give opponents different looks more often. And that doesn't necessarily mean take some of these players you know, out of a game and put in a substitute player. But when it comes to pitching, right, using a platoon, right, using a group of picture pitchers in a sequence, using starters less necessarily in some of these outings, and obviously that they can, in order to save longevity and trust the consistency and build a consistency of confidence in your bullpen. That is something the Tigers have done in an incredible way over since our August, really since the really since the All-Star break, but since August, really since August, when is this thing really took off, right? Once we started to get this winning streak going and make this a possibility to win 31 of some 42, 43 odd games, which is unbelievable, right? So being able to adapt to your scheme to be able to adjust and benefit the strengths of your players, right? Because the Tigers, obviously the bats were very inconsistent. So what do they do? They implemented a way to really get their pitching staff in a way that can really consistently be at the top of their game, giving the offense less stress of having to try to win the game themselves. And that's something that they do at a high level, right? That's something that A.J. Hinch does at a high level. Uh, The second thing that comes to mind when it comes to uh, being able to kind of equip 
how that you can take from the Tigers and make it successful in your own high school program is especially looking at a way to get your team culture up is obviously a way to do it, but more more kind of in-depth, more of something that can be a key point of emphasis as opposed to such a broad statement, right? Getting your guys together consistently despite outcomes, right? The Tigers, when they started and really made this July 4th run since the All-Star break, they had some of these guys together, but they were still moving some guys in and out until they kind of realized that we need to really get these guys together and let them stick, right? Let them stick in their spots. Let them really kind of gain confidence in where they're at in almost a routine-like fashion. And, and that's something that can be beneficial for a high school program, right? If you have a situation where you have to replace a lot of players, you have to go into a situation and know that we might lose a couple games right off to get the gelling together. But if that's the benefit for the longevity of the season, right, it's kind of at the point where you say, are we going to risk the change and a potential derailment? Or do we kind of, quote unquote, bite the bullet for the first couple of games to figure it out and then have the high potential of winning games longer on, right? And the only way you can do that is build your chemistry. Put these young guys in your system and be able to give them opportunities so they can gain experience. Because a lot of the times when we talk about the improvements of players, almost I would be willing to bet six or seven out of ten times it might be physical of those kind of things where they've improved, right? Strength, size, right? Explosiveness, mobility. It's more of the time, I would argue seven to six to seven out of the ten of times that I would say you see that improvement is because of the mental side of it, right? Being able to understand that you can make a run based off of your confidence in what you're doing as a player mentally as much physically, right? It's a really mental game, right? It is in baseball. Football the same way, basketball the same thing, right? Cross country, wrestling, golf, tennis, no matter what the sport is, it's always it's always going to have the physical traits and elements, but the mentality is what makes your team go from a good team to a great team, right? And a great team to an elite team, an elite team to an unstoppable team. And so those are the things that you have to look for. How can we mentally prepare ourselves better, right? How can we be willing to equip our players to be more comfortable bearing down on those mental walls and obstacles during a contest, right? It comes with the confidence that you have in the guy next to you, the guy in front of you in the lineup, the guy next to you in your scheme, strategically, formation concern, right? It's what you have as a team, the chemistry, the culture, right? What can your team do when your back's against the wall? Building the confidence takes time. It takes time. It takes time. Get your guys more opportunities to get onto the field more together or on the competitive surface together and see what they can do. And it's amazing what might turn around because the Tigers, as far as scheme-wise, obviously, as I mentioned, kind of the platoon change, it really wasn't necessarily a full overload of we're going to change the entire way we do things. It was just a little bit of a minor tweak, right? Let's give our guys more opportunities out of the pen. Let's move our starters back a little bit. Let's create a little more consistency. It really had nothing to do. It's not like they full overloaded all nine guys in their lineup. Obviously, there were guys in and out, but they realized the core group that they got together, that was working. They just had to give it time the first 10, 15 games right after the All-Star break, and that's when it took off, right? A lot of coaches will bail after those 15 games, but A.J. Hinch did not, and coaches can certainly take some word from that and hopefully use it with their own program. The third thing that comes to mind, especially with this Tigers run that can be applied to a high school program, is when you have a community of a fan base behind you that can take you anywhere, it can take you anywhere, and it makes your life easier, right? It comes to the it comes down to this. The Tigers fan base really has not given up on this franchise. Let's 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 be frank. They have not given up on this franchise. Yes, you can see the discussion boards. Yes, you can see social media, the rants, the tirades. We're sick and tired of this. But the reality is the fans have always been behind what the team's done, what the ownerships have done, what the players have done on the field. They still support the team. And when you have that consistent base to the point now where your players know, hey, we can go out and lose 10 nothing or win 10 nothing. our fans still got our backs. That gives you the confidence, right? The mental confidence, just like we talked about, to be able to go out and make plays and not be scared of the repercussions of the media criticism after the fact. And so when you have that fan base behind you, it's huge. So building that connection not only with your teammates and that chemistry, 
being able to equip that with your fans, right? We talked about alumni relations and how they can be a huge part of it, right? Your community of your town and your fans, right? How can you get them involved? How can you make them feel like they're a part of this thing, right? I'm just a little old small town radio guy here with our football team at Reed City. And those coaches have made me feel like I'm another coach or I'm another fan. It's incredible. They do an amazing job. And that's how the fans feel with their team. It feels like it's their team. And that's why when you see an unfortunate loss, it's not a going back, going at the throat, criticism, negativity all the time. It's, man, we lost that one. But you know what? It's okay. We're going to bounce back, right? And they tell the players that. They verbally go to the players and reinforce that value of they are going to get back into it. And that just builds the confidence back of the player, builds the confidence of the coach, and then it builds the confidence of a team to really rebound. And look at what the Tigers did with a rebound. It's amazing. So those are three ways and three observations that I had that can equate the Tigers' run, their magical run at Comerica Park. We can't wait to see them in the postseason and how you can apply that to a high school program uh, to help improve the success. Hopefully you guys found that very interesting. I certainly did, and it's been great to watch the Tigers, and I hope you guys too. If you want to listen to Tiger baseball this postseason, we got the coverage for you. WBRN 96.5 and 1460 each and every game. Game, folks, is going to be on WBRN. We can't wait to bring that to you. It's going to be a nice, nice time to be a Tigers fan, right? We've waited 10 years for this. It's been exciting, and it's been a great time of high school sports, and we can't wait to see that continue on even after baseball season is over. It's got a lot of great things. The postseason is coming here in CSAA, so be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss out on anything, and uh, we can't wait to see you here on the next edition of the West Michigan Sports Show. Big thanks to our sponsors. Big thanks especially goes out to Dezos Digital. Big thanks goes out to you, the fans, and we'll see you back here in seven days. Same time, same place, right here on News Radio WBRN.